season of The Walking Dead game. Now, right up front, I have to tell you that there may be some spoilers in here. Actually, there will definitely be spoilers. If you haven't played it, then you probably shouldn't be listening to this right now. How it's going to work is instead of just going through each episode and, you know, reviewing it to you, I'm just going to give you like an overall sense of each season. I'll do like a quick thing for each episode, of course. And at the end of this review, I will tell you each of my uh, decisions throughout this season. Um, you know, the things they show you at the end of each episode, like what you did and they compare you to other people to make you feel bad. Yeah, so I'll be telling you those things, each of my decisions. And I'll explain basically why I made that decision, just to, you can get a better sense of like how I went through the game. Because honestly, to me, half the fun of this game is just to see what your friends do and see what other decisions people make and see what, you know, how they experience this story. So I'm just going to run through each episode kind of quickly and give you my overall thoughts on that episode. And when I've, you know, gone through all five, I'll tell you what I thought of the season overall. Now our first episode in the second season is titled Amid the Ruins and it takes place a few months after the ending of the first season. And you'd think after like a very emotional ending to the first season um, that you know the first episode of the second season might be like more laid back, it would just be kind of like rebuilding, getting things back together. But um, And you start to get that sense as the uh, episode begins. But it's just, that isn't really the case. It's, you know, more bullshit for Clementine, and you really feel for it. This episode is a very lonely episode. And if I had to sum up episode one of season two with one word, it would definitely be lonely. Um, you spend the majority of the episode alone, just, you know, wandering. And you run into this cabin, you meet this new group of people, and you know, you don't know any of them. They aren't familiar to you as Clementine or the player, and you start to really miss the group you were with, and you really, really start to miss Lee. And you know that you're on your own at this point, and your only option is to either, you know, stick it out alone or try and wedge yourself in with this group of people. And you know, that's not really your choice. You obviously end up joining that group, but you know, and that's something you need to come to terms with in this like Walking Dead universe is that you know people die and you have to move on, you have to rebuild, and that's your only means of survival, you know. But that's you know that's just how it is. And personally, I had a difficult time connecting with this uh, new group. They, you know, I could have off any of them off at any point, you know, just to get Lee back. Of course, any I think any of us would, right? So, but you do have to make some pretty tough choices in this first episode. And I think by the end of the episode, you're, you're pretty much into the group. They've accepted you, you've accepted them. And as the player, I, you know, I felt like, you know, I, I have to try and build a bond with these characters. They're all going to die, right? And of course, you do play as Clementine now, so you're a child, and you don't have the authority that Lee had in the first season, so you start to miss that power quite a bit. But it's a new dynamic, you know? It, we knew after the first season that we were probably going to have to play in Clementine's shoes. And, you know, we're seeing her come into her own, you know, she's growing up and she has to learn to survive on her own. And that's what we're seeing in this first episode and it's really great to see. But now Clementine isn't that moral compass anymore. She like is you now. And, you know, when you were playing the first season, you know, sometimes you would make some decisions keeping in mind that Clementine's right there, so you might have not done something bad, you might have done something to show her how to survive, but now she isn't that moral compass anymore in a sense, and I kind of miss that. It, it, I do miss it because her being that moral compass uh, really dictated how I played the first season, so now I'm sort of making some decisions for, on my own and for her, and you know, I'm not sure if Lee would be so proud of me, but uh, but hey, that's life, and we gotta move on with it, right? So, rest in peace, Lee. But overall, it was a good episode. It was a lonely episode. And I think that's what made it so great, because it's an emotion that you would expect to feel after losing Lee and losing like the rest of your group after the first season. Now, the second episode in the second season is titled The House Divided, and we see the group after the first episode they leave their cabin and they you know they have to go find something else they got to find a better living situation because of some events that happened in the first episode a lot of people um don't like this episode i find i, I don't know if maybe you like it i love it actually this might be one of my favorite episodes in the second season maybe my second favorite 
there's a lot of tension in this episode and I really liked that. Um, and of course, spoiler alert, big spoiler alert, Kenny does come back in this episode. And I swear Kenny is one of the most dividing characters in all of video games. Like half the people I talk to love him, the other half hates him. Personally, I'm not a big fan of Kenny, but like when I saw him in this episode, it was just euphoria. I was like, oh, something familiar, you know, I, you know, I clung on to him and I was like, this is great, okay, now that I have somebody I know here, I feel a little bit more comfortable with this group. And this is probably the happiest episode of the of the entire five, and I think that's why people don't like it, but like, you can't have all darkness in The Walking Dead, right? There has to be these small moments of happiness. There needs to be those moments of happiness, there needs to be those moments of light that, you know, that makes it worth continuing, right? Because if it was all darkness, you know, what's the point? But while, you know, you're in this happy state with, you know, rejoining with Kenny, you know, the group's coming together, we're finally starting to trust each other, there is this underlying tension because of something that happened towards the beginning of this episode. And, you know, it's that tension that really makes me like this episode a lot. It doesn't need to be action-packed. It just, you know, there needs to be something that makes this interesting, and I find that this underlying tension with this new character who's with Kenny, um, I think it's really great. The shit really begins to hit the fan at the end of this episode, and that's how we're going to sort of segue into the third episode, which is titled In Harm's Way. And to a lot of people, this episode is the peak of the season. It's where everything really starts to unfold. And I agree, actually. It, you know, a lot of stuff happens in this episode, and it's really what um, defines this season. And that's interesting because that moment happened, the peak, the thing that brought everything to get to a head sort of happened in the fifth episode of the first season, but it, you know, it's happening in the third episode of this season, so it's really interesting to see. And then fourth and fifth is more of like the fallout of what happens in this season, in this episode, I should say. And this is the favorite episode of a lot of people, and I think it might be my favorite ep episode as well. A lot of things happen in it, it's very action-packed, there's a lot of drama, there's a lot of tension. And I have to recommend this episode. Of course, you're gonna play all the episodes, right? But like, if any, if I had to recommend one episode this season, it might be this one or the fifth one, or the second one. You know, whatever. I don't want to say too much about this episode, but um, it's very good. I'll just tell you that. And now we'll just move on to the fourth episode. <laughs> this fourth episode is titled "Amid the Ruins," and. It's probably my least favorite episode of this season, actually. And not a lot of things happen. There's just some, like, some more build-up to what'll happen in the fifth episode. Not a lot of action. The tension kind of... It falls flat for me, personally. But you're definitely seeing some fallout of things that happened in the third episode. And, you know, it's sort of a combination of fallout and building tension because you're having that fallout of things that happened in the third episode but you're also building towards what'll happen in this fifth episode and a lot of people like that but to me i don't know it's uh it just it didn't work for me but the group is dividing again um you know it's sort of it's sort of you know pitting some people against other people and you just you're, you have to you're in the middle you don't know who to choose and it's it's really tough and um, the end of this episode is is a pretty big cliffhanger, and so that sort of like segues into our fifth episode and final episode this season. And this final episode of the second season is titled No Going Back, and No Going Back indeed, because this is a roller coaster ride from here on out. Um, people are dying, you don't know who to trust. I've never been more torn in an episode of The Walking Dead than I have been with this episode, I will tell you that much. Um, I'm really torn as actually it's as to if it's my favorite episode or not. It might be this or the um, third episode, but you know, of course, it's the last episode. You're gonna get that really, you're really gonna get that strong finish, and that's what she said. But it's a real, it's a. I really enjoyed this ending, and I just sort of want to get into my decisions so I can tell you, you know, what I did throughout the season. But I have to say, this fifth episode of the Walking Dead season two was a shit show. Overall, this was a really good season of The Walking Dead. Um, I didn't enjoy it as much as I uh, enjoyed the first one. The first one, it seemed like it 
it was new, but like this time I really, you know, you understand the mechanics of the game, so it sort of takes some of that magic away. It's sort of like knowing how a magician does his tricks, right? And it sort of takes away from some of that magic, but I did really enjoy this, and I'm really interested to see where this, uh, where it goes in the third season, because uh, what I was just saying about like the magician revealing his tricks, there's actually multiple endings to this um, second season, more than just the two, you know, you make this decision, you make, or you make this decision. Apparently, there's like four or five or six uh, different endings. I'm not 100% uh, sure on the number, but um, so I'm interested to see how that all works uh, when the third season comes around. There were a lot of different interesting characters in this second season. A lot of them that I really liked. Some of them I was like, well, you can die at any point. I won't really care. Um, but I still, you know, I still found myself missing Carly, and I still missed. Lee and, you know, I missed all those characters, Christo, Mead, you know, I got really attached to the group in the first season, so, you know, I was, I was sort of like, eh, I don't really care for this new group of people in the second season, but as the season did go on, I got more attached to them, I realized how interesting uh, these characters really are, I learned some more about them, and it'll be uh, really cool to see how it all uh, goes in the third season. So that is my review of the second season of The Walking Dead. Um, if I were to give it something out of 10, I would probably give it a 7. But the first season, I would give a 9. So that's just how I compare those two. Still a really good score. I really enjoyed this second season. I would recommend it to anybody. And of course, the first season, if you haven't tried them out before. And I'll probably be bringing you a Let's Play of the third season and I'll be using the same save file that I've been talking about here so I'm gonna be listing off all my decisions for you in a moment so you will be caught up and uh, we'll be going into this third season knowing what's going on so for those of you who are still watching the video I'm basically just gonna go through each episode now tell you what decisions I made for each particular scenario and explain why I made the decision so the first thing, uh, the first decision for the first episode is, did you save Krista? And, um, of course I tried to save Krista. I'm extremely sentimental with, like, the first season characters. And I was just clinging on to any familiarity at that point. And so, of course, uh, uh, a lot of, it uh, looks like the majority of people tried to save Krista. So, good for you guys. The second, um, decision that you can make is whether or not if you killed the dog and I'm a dumbass, I didn't kill the dog, and you know, I ended up paying for it, right? So, um, no, I did not kill the dog. It looks like I am in the vast minority on this one. Um, a lot of you are very merciful. I was gonna let the dog just live, you know, but you know, fuck me, right? The third decision that you can make in the first episode is whether or not you accept Nick's apology, and I did. I didn't, you know, I was trying to get in with this group. I was trying to feel more comfortable towards these characters, so I was like, why not accept the apology? There's why be a dick about the situation, right? Just because this guy looks like Kenny a bit? I don't know. The fourth decision is whether or not you give water to the dying man, and I did because, you know, that's that's just, that's the thing you do, right? But it looks like um, this one was a little more dividing, actually. It was like 68% to 32 or something, so, wow, you know, 32% of you have some trust issues. And the final decision of the episode, and probably the most dividing, is whether or not to save Nick or Pete. And I actually went with uh, to save Nick, because, you know, seniority rules, right? It's the guy's nephew, you gotta respect uh, Pete's wishes. And, you know, personally I didn't really, I didn't care too much for Nick, but I respected the fact that he wanted his nephew to live, so I just, you know, I went by the, that logic. And it appears I'm in the slight minority on this one. It was like 47% saved Nick, 53% chose to save Pete. There's really no wrong answer in this situation, so I did save Nick, and those are my decisions for the first episode. So I'll continue on to the second episode now. The first decision of the second episode is whether or not if you take blame for Sarah's uh, photograph. And I did take blame for it simply because... You know, I wanted Clementine to look strong and tough in the presence of the group and Sarah. So that's why I went with that decision. The second decision of the episode is who you sit with at dinner. Do you sit with Luke or do you sit with Kenny? 
and a lot of you may think, oh, Thomas is going to say with Kenny, you know, he loves that familiarity. But at this point, I was still thinking of Kenny as a bit of a dick, so I went and sat with Luke, and I sort of regret that decision a little bit. Eh, I was a 50-50 on it. But I did sit with Luke because I wanted to show that, you know, I'm down the middle. You know, I like both of you guys. There's no favoritism here, because just because Kenny's a first-season character... He was probably my least favorite first season character, so you know, I don't like him too much at this point. But I do really like him because he is something familiar. Now the third decision is a tough decision, and it's whether or not you tell Walter about Matthew. And I did tell him the truth about Matthew. Um, it, seemed, it seemed like the right thing to do at that point, but like, tension was building, man. I was like, the pressure's on, I gotta do something, and I did tell him the truth. Seemed like the right thing to do. Alright. And of course the fourth decision is whether or not you get Walter to forgive Nick. And of course I tried to get Walter to forgive Nick. I didn't want I didn't want some big falling out and somebody to die. So, you know, I just tried to be the peacekeeper and make sure everybody's happy, even though you killed this guy's husband or boyfriend and yeah. Now, the final decision is whether or not you decide to surrender to Carver or seek help from Kenny. And I seeked help from Kenny. Um, wasn't the best decision, I guess, but it is what I tried to do. Especially after not sitting with him at dinner, you know, I felt a little bad. So I was like, yeah, Kenny, you know, I'm on your side now. Go and do shit. But that's the decision I made simply for that because I did not sit with him at dinner. I wanted his help then and there. So the first decision of the third episode is whether or not you decide to help Sarah with her chores. And I did, I'm a nice guy, right? So I'll help Sarah with her chores, probably shouldn't have, but I'm such a great guy. I don't even like Sarah, to be honest. She is the most annoying character this uh, season, but uh, I, I have a soft spot, I guess. Next is whether or not you decide to tell Bonnie about Luke, and fuck that bitch, I did not tell Bonnie about Luke. Um, simply because I don't like Bonnie. I think she sucks. She's just really shitty and fuck her. Next is whether or not you try and hide the walkie-talkie. Um, and I did try to hide it because, you know, <laughs> eh, seemed, it, it, I, I feel like I could have gotten away with it if I, if I put in the effort. So I did try and get away with it. The next decision is whether or not you got Clementine to watch Kenny kill Carver and I did, I did get Clementine to watch Kenny kill Carver. Uh, K Clementine is tough at this point, you know, she's seen some shit, she's done some shit herself. You know, this is really nothing new. But I guess the whole moral dilemma was, you know, there's no reason to watch him do it. So it would just be for vengeance, it would be like a, it would be a sick thing to do. So I, I kind of didn't rationalize it that way till after so I guess I'm just a sick human being and, and the final uh, decision of the third episode is whether or not you choose to cut off Sarita's arm because of course she was bitten by a walker and I did decide to chop off her arm because you know that you know that seemed like the best way to save her you know st stop the spread of the infection by cutting off the limb and didn't work out but I tried and oh well rest in peace Trucking right along into the fourth episode. I'm trying to keep this under half an hour for you guys. And it looks like I'm making good time. We're at about the 20 minute mark, pretty close. So the first de uh, decision that can be made in the fourth episode is whether or not you save Sarah. And I just let Sarah die. You know, as I mentioned before, don't really like Sarah. She was incapable of surviving in this world. Um, she just, you know, it never really clicked to her that the things she has to do to survive, she's really, she still has a very innocent mindset, and that's not, I guess, that's not the mindset you're supposed to have in this kind of world. But, you know, it never really clicked to her, she was never going to make it, so, goodbye. The second decision is whether or not you decide to steal from Arvo, and I did not decide to steal from Arvo, because obviously if I did, I just knew it was going to come back and bite me in the ass anyway. So, you know, didn't steal from Arvo keep your things. The next decision is whether or not you crawl through the ticket booth or let Bonnie reach and, you know, Clementine's a small girl, she can fit through, no problem. I mostly did it because for Mike, I liked Mike. He was a pretty cool character. 
So I crawled through, mostly for him, not for Bonnie. Fuck Bonnie. The next decision is whether or not you decide to hold the newborn baby, and of course I held the newborn baby. It looks like the vast majority of people did. You know, it's just a nice thing to do. I didn't even think this was a big moral choice, but that's what I decided to do. Next is, uh, did you decide to shoot Rebecca? And I did not decide to shoot Rebecca. Most people did. I did not because I felt if I did, then something crazy would happen. And my hope was that, like, when Rebecca turned into a walk or something, she would, like, lunge at one of the Russian guys with the gun. And so I, th you know, I reasoned it that way. I thought it would work out. But it didn't happen, you know, she ended up getting shot by someone else, and then clusterfuck cliffhanger ending, and yeah. The first decision to be made in the fifth and last episode is whether or not you decide to protect the baby, and I did protect the baby. Most people did, because most people are good people. Looks like 15% of you didn't, though, so... Because <laughs> you don't like Rebecca's baby that much. The next decision is whether or not you tried to save Luke, and it was very dividing, actually. It's like 49.7% to 50.3%. And I did try to help Luke because, you know, I liked Luke at that point. He's a pretty cool guy. So I tried to help him out, and unfortunately, didn't work out, but, you know, those are, those are the breaks of the ice. The next de decision, and it is not dividing at all, is whether or not you ask to leave with Mike. And um, it is like 49, no, 95% to like 5%. No one, for the most part, wanted to leave with Mike. And I didn't either. I didn't want to leave with Mike. I was pretty loyal to Kenny at that point, and Jane, and... I just wanted to keep the group together, you know, why, why, why are you trying to leave, Mike? Why are you trying to, Bonnie, you can go, you, Bonnie, you can leave, but Mike, you're a cool guy, why are you doing this? And probably one of the most difficult decisions to make in, like, both seasons of The Walking Dead is whether or not you decide to shoot Kenny, and I did decide to shoot Kenny, looks like most people did. Um, at this point I did know there was like five multiple endings, like there's an ending where you could actually like leave with Kenny and be happy with the baby, but, um, no, it was, at that point it didn't look like things were gonna pan out, you know, at that point I thought there was only one ending, and it looked like Kenny was gonna, I thought he would just end up dying anyway, so you know what, I wanted to be the one to put down Kenny, it's time for him to go see Duck and Katya, and... You know, he's been through so much, he's lost so much, he's just such a damaged man, and I did not want Jane to be the one to kill him. It was more of a sympathy kill to, for me to shoot him, so that's how I reasoned that. And, yeah, um, it was time for him to die. It was time for Kenny's journey to end. I was cutting ties with pretty much everything from the first season at that point. It was time to move on. That's how I reasoned it. And so there's the, these five multiple endings that you could have got, and um, I'm just gonna like read off some of them to you right now. Uh, it's who you basically end up with at the end of the season, and there's five. Yeah, there's five different um, scenarios that can work out with you. You can be with the baby Jane and like this random family. I haven't seen that one. Um, you can be with AJ and Kenny. I have seen that one. That's like the happy ending, apparently. Um, you can be with AJ alone. AJ is the baby. Um, you can be with AJ at Wellington, and Wellington is where you've been trying to go uh, with Kenny uh, throughout the season. Well, for the last part of the season. And you can be alone with AJ, um, or you can be with AJ and Jane uh, without the family. And I was in the minority on this one. I was, um, I was just alone with AJ. Uh, no family, no... Uh, I left Jane behind because, you know, she's. I thought she was just as crazy as Kenny, to be honest. Um, so I left Jane, killed Kenny, and I went alone with the baby and didn't make it to Wellington. I don't know how you get to Wellington uh, with the baby, but yeah, I was just alone with the baby. Now we're just walking off into the sunset and we're going to see how things go in the third season. And those are my decisions, guys. That is how I played the second season of The Walking Dead game. Um, I'd like to thank you for watching. We're reaching that 25-minute mark, so I'm going to end things here. And I will be doing a Let's Play of the third season with that save file that I just described to you. 
and I'd really like to thank you for watching again. Don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. But, you know, um, let me know how you guys played this uh, season. You know, if you happen to come across this video, like, nobody's going to see it, I know. But, like, if you come across this video, you listen to it, you know, put down in the comments, like, how you played the game and stuff. Because that's honestly half the fun of what makes The Walking Dead game so great. Is, you know, not only the decisions you make, but seeing how other people play the game, you know. That's what I really like about it. Alright, so till next time, have a good one. Peace out.